Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, Insane Med. This is Supreeta. I'm a final year medical student in BGS Medical College, Bangalore, India. And in today's video, I'm going to be talking to you guys about how to use a question bank as a learning resource. I know a lot of people think that a question bank can only be used after you have completed reading the entire chapter or after you have completed your syllabus. And so most of them use question banks only as a testing tool. But what if I tell you that your question banks can be used for so much more than that? You can literally use it as a learning tool. And I have been doing this for a very long time where I end up mastering entirely new topics that I've never read about before by learning through question banks and that is what i'm going to show you guys today about how i do it i'll be giving you guys a walkthrough of how i use my question bank to learn new topics the question bank that i'm using today is a usmd question bank called true learn so i'll give you guys a detailed explanation of how i try to eliminate options in the mcqs and if I get a question wrong, how I try to learn from it using the explanations given. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so now let's start with creating a new test. I have opened my true learn question bank and I have put the number of questions to 10 and let's give it a name as YouTube test. Okay, now here the options are what is important because they are going to let me optimize my learning. In this option, I'm going to choose something called a tutor mode because when I put on tutor mode, what's going to happen is if I get a question wrong, I will be able to see all the explanations given below then and there itself after I get the question wrong. But if I take a time test, then I will have to finish the entire test and go towards the end and then review the questions. But instead, I like going into tutor mode. Okay. After that, I'm going to choose the type of questions I want. So I'm going to put all types of questions. And I'm going to choose system wise. So you can choose system wise or specialty wise or competency wise. But recently I've been reading system wise for my exam. So I'm going to choose system wise and USMLE visualization type is what I'm going to choose here. After that, you will be able to choose what system you want to solve questions on. So I recently started in cardiovascular system. So let's go to cardiovascular system. I have not completed it yet. I have only started the anatomy and pathology part of revision, but still I'm going to choose all of it because I'm trying to learn as well and not just test myself. So let's choose all disciplines and now I'm going to start the test. Okay. So let's see here we have a question. A 42 year old man has progressive weakness and difficulty breathing over the past seven weeks. For the past several days, he has also noticed significant ankle swelling and he decided to consult a physician. He has a past medical history significant for diabetes mellitus and was diagnosed three months ago with tuberculosis. His pulse is 79, respiration is 14, blood pressure is 110 by 90. He denies any nausea, vomiting or diarrhea. Troponin, glucose, creatinine and cholesterol levels are normal. A CT scan shows thickening of the pericardium with normal thickness of the ventricular walls and septum. Which of these characteristics is consistent with the symptoms of this patient? Okay, let's see. Um, I'm going to start by underlining what are the important things that I think are given in the question. First of all, it is... a uh, complaint of progressive weakness and difficulty breathing over the past seven weeks okay let's highlight that that is the chief complaint with which the patient came okay and then for the past several days he noticed ankle swelling so there is ankle swelling that is happening and decided to consult a physician so from both of these one thing that i can incur is that there is some problem that is going on with the right side of the heart because there is ankle swelling so there is leg edema and there's also progressive difficulty and weakness that is happening so i'm thinking of some sort of pulmonary edema that's happening because of any cause or any pathology in the right heart and they say he has a past medical history of diabetes okay there is a past medical history of diabetes and he was diagnosed three months ago with tuberculosis. Fine. 
Okay, so the troponin, glucose and creatinine levels, cholesterol is also normal. So I think they've done that to rule out any sort of MI. And a CT scan shows thickening of the pericardium with normal thickness of the ventricular walls and septum. Okay, so they've given us a thickening of pericardium. Which of these characteristics is consistent with the symptoms of this patient? So let's look at the options. Decreased jugular venous pressure, dynamic obstruction to the left ventricular outflow, lack of diastolic expansion, reduced contractility and ejection fraction, and reduced ventricular compliance. Okay, so I'm going to go with the uh, option of lack of diastolic expansion. So let's look at the answer. But let's hope I'm right. <laughs> okay. It is right. Yeah. So I was thinking of pericarditis. Now I'm going to explain why I chose option C. Okay. So the first thing is there was progressive weakness and difficulty. So I can either think of uh, the respiratory system involved or the cardiac system involved for any respiratory difficulty. But uh, going forward, they have also given that there is some sort of ankle swelling that is present. So because of this, I can probably think that the system involved here is the heart and not the lung. Because ankle swelling usually happens in any sort of right-sided heart failure that is happening. And because of the right-sided heart failure, maybe there is pulmonary edema. And because of this pulmonary edema, the patient can be experiencing progressive weakness and difficulty in breathing. Okay. The next thing we have is a significant history of diabetes mellitus and tuberculosis. So we know that tuberculosis is something which is common in immunocompromised patients. And since this patient is a diabetic, maybe he has some sort of pathology which is directly related to tuberculosis. And that's why they've given it in the uh, question. They've also given us that the pulse is normal, the respiratory rate is normal and the blood pressure is normal. So it's not some sort of, um, um, I would say, MI or anything because they've also given that there's no increase in troponins, there's no increase in cholesterol levels. So there's no uh, acute shock or, you know, any MI that is happening because the vitals are seeming normal. The only thing is they have given us a CT scan which shows thickening of the pericardium. Now this is obviously pointing towards pericarditis. The CT scan clinches the diagnosis that this is some sort of pericarditis that is happening. The question that they have asked is what is the characteristic uh, characteristics consistent with this patient's symptom. So I'm pretty sure from all of this you were able to come to a diagnosis but even if you did not know the question there are ways in which you can rule out the diagnosis and I'm going to explain how you can do that. Let's look at the first option it says decreased jugular venous pressure. Now this definitely can't be seen in this patient because they have given a consistent history that is suggestive of some sort of right-sided heart failure that is happening, especially with, you know, ankle swelling and increased dif difficulty in breathing. So I would rather expect an increased jugular venous pressure. So option A cannot be right. Now option B is dynamic obstruction to the left ventricular outflow. I would not choose this option because uh, there are no uh, signs in this patient suggestive of a left ventricular hypertrophy or left ventricular uh, um, problem of any sort because the vitals are all seeming normal and even in the CT they have given that there is normal thickness of the ventricular walls, uh, walls and the septum. So if there were any sort of obstruction to the left ventricular outflow I would have expected some sort of left ventricular hypertrophy to be present but that is not the case so I can rule out this option too. Now option D is reduce contractility and ejection fraction. Again, like I said, there is no signs of left ventricular uh, dysfunction or failure uh, given in this patient because the vitals are normal. His pulse is 79, uh, his BP is 110 by 90, which is all pretty normal. So again, I wouldn't choose uh, D, which is reduce contractility and ejection fraction. But if you look at option E, option E could definitely have been something that you could have thought of. Reduced ventricular compliance because of which, you know, there is a right-sided uh, failure that is happening and leading to pulmonary edema and breathlessness. That could have been a thing. 
but the clinching diagnosis here was thickening of the pericardium which definitely gives away the answer that it is pericarditis and we all know that in pericarditis there is a lack of diastolic expansion that happens that is why i was able to choose this answer but even if you did not know this answer you definitely could have ruled out option a b and d just by the symptoms of the patient that was given here like i told you guys so you would have been left with only two options c and e and that is a very good place to be in instead of having to choose between five options if you can narrow down to two options that you have to choose from it is a very very good thing for you to be able to do in any sort of competitive exams so this is how i basically uh, rule out options and try to understand the topics the next thing is let's say you did not um, know anything about pericarditis and you were not able to rule out between option c and option e and you chose option e and you got it wrong the best part about a question bank is that you will get explanations down below like this see you will get the explanation of why this answer is correct here they've given that the uh, diagnosis for this patient is constrictive uh, pericarditis and they have given everything the etiology of constrictive pericarditis here you can see that our patient has tuberculosis and that was the cause of the pericarditis in this patient and they have given the clinical manifestations as fatigue dyspnea on exertion both of which was present in our patient and also cardiac cirrhosis which leads to ascites and peripheral edema so all three of these things were present in our patient peripheral edema dyspnea on exertion and fatigue so the examination findings have also been given like i told you guys i was expecting a increased jugular venous pressure that is going to be present in any sort of right sided failure that i'm thinking of but our option here was a which was a decreased jugular venous pressure which you can immediately rule out if you are thinking clinically of how this patient is presenting like a right sided cardiac failure patient okay let's take another example now again i was solving one of the questions and i got the answer wrong here because i did not know anything about this topic the best thing about a question bank is that you will be able to learn about this topic from the explanation that is given here below so the topic that i had here was something related to <clears throat> acute decompensation of uh the heart or heart failure and i had not studied this topic so um i could not rule out the options very well so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to go through the explanation that is given here they have given an very detailed explanation about the symptoms exam findings the lab findings the x ray findings and the other findings that can be present in a patient of an acute decompensated heart failure but along with this they have also given very wonderful explanations here which is basically a compilation of everything that i need to know about this topic and the best part about this is i don't have to go and open a textbook and sit down to read about this topic again because everything is basically given here i will go through this explanation and i will know solidly pretty much so many things about that particular topic i'm not saying that only reading the question bank is enough but you can definitely use it as a tool to improve your understanding of how questions are asked in your exam and how it is that you should be approaching a topic while you're reading the best part about this is they will also give you explanation about why the other topics that were there wrong which adds to your integration of topics because when we are reading a topic what we are actually doing is we are just compartmentalizing ourselves and reading only about that particular topic we are not thinking about the other topics but when a question like this pops up and you have to rule out options that may be similar like this you will have the opportunity to integrate various topics that might have similarities in presentation which is a wonderful thing to do and you can do this only if you are solving mcqs and solving question banks and you have a good question bank like this so if you guys have been enjoying this video so far i would like to take this opportunity to talk about true learn which is a wonderful platform that is um useful for usmle aspirants if you are planning to take your step 1 and step 2 please do go and check out true learn which has a compilation of thousands and thousands of usmle questions and it is going to be a wonderful resource for you guys to learn from 
the one more amazing thing about true learn is that it has now got an integrated with picmonic picmonic as you guys already know i have made several videos about them already is a wonderful animated uh, platform which gives you short videos which act as memory anchors for you to be able to remember difficult topics because you know medicine is a memory based subject there are so many things that you have to remember and what picmonic does is that it makes this memorization easier for you guys to do so let's say i had some topics that i could not answer well during the true learn test that i was taking what this um platform is going to do is it's going to show me recent incorrect topics here and so if there is something called temporal arteritis that i don't know anything about or maybe i know it and i don't remember it i can directly press the picmonic video option that is given there and it will show me temporal the arteritis video. portrayed by the temple of arteries is an inflammatory disorder of the arteries it is also called giant cell arteritis shown by the large cell temporal arteritis is a granulomatous vasculitis depicted by the granny llama statues this disease often affects older females portrayed by the old lady sitting in the temple cell so what is there in your picmonic videos is that there are two options if you guys can see here one is the educational option and the other is going to be the story option so in the educational option they're actually going to explain about the topic that you have chosen they will also give you a story option where they will explain the topics in the form of a story so that you can remember better and this old lady couldn't have agreed more when she read the travel brochure she had always wanted to seek out the beautiful bell curve CK with sterile stairs, elevating the world-renowned ESR fountains. But now she just wants to leave. So this is how I use my question bank as a learning tool and help me understand your topics and also help me understand how the topics that I'm reading are related to the real world scenarios or how it is going to be tested on the exams so that I can give more importance to the topics which are actually important and which are actually tested. So I hope that this video was a little helpful to you guys in understanding my thought process of how I use question banks and how I use... Um, you know ruling out options as a thing to learn better about topics if this video was helpful to you guys please do let me know in the comment section below and don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel thank you so much for watching have a nice day